So I've been caught up with so many other projects and it's taken me a year to get to this point, but I feel like it's time for me to tackle Dust Collection. Long overdue, I had Dust Collection in my old shop and it worked great and um, I'm afraid of how much time I've taken off my life just breathing this dust. Even with dust masks, you know, it's just uh, not as good as getting the majority of the dust taken care of with the dust collector. And on top of that, if you look down here, it saves me from having to go in there and uh, clean up all of that. That That is a full cabinet, table saw cabinet full of sawdust. So I've got some, uh, I've already got a spot dedicated here in this corner for my dust collector. Problem is, is it's full of plywood right now. So I need to dig that out. Well, I don't really need to get to that yet. I gotta build my cyclone first. I haven't built a cyclone in the past. My last dust collector was, I use a fine baffle, thin baffle, whatever you wanna call it. And it worked out pretty good. I mean, the final filter still got clogged pretty regularly and I'm gonna to try to figure out a way to eliminate that so I'm gonna dig out the material I plan on using to make my cyclone and then um, I'll get back with you guys Alright, this is the material I plan on using. It is HDPE, high density polyethylene. These uh, are actually the sides of chemical totes that I have cut up. Um, I tried to cut them to get the largest flat dimensions I could get out of them. And this is one tote that I cut up, so I have like four or five of these. Um, these that don't have any ribs or anything that would interfere with me bending this material. So I don't have a lot of experience working with this. Um, I'm going to do some calculations, get a pattern figured out, and then I'm going to start drawing and cutting. And then maybe I will use a torch and maybe some rivets to get it all together. So we'll see how it uh, progresses as I go along here. All right, sorry for the heater in the background here. Let's uh, see what type of dimensions I have to work with. Um, I'm gonna have to shape my cyclone to fit the material I have to work with. So one dimension I got here is about 42 inches. And I believe the other dimension yeah, is 42 inches. So. I got a 42 inch square to work with. I'm going to go do some calculations. Once I'm done with that, I'll bring you guys back. Chicago Metal Rolled Products. Alright, so I'm shooting, I'm just going to put in an arbitrary um, thickness because they only use the thickness to determine weight, which doesn't matter. My minor diameter is going to be 6 inches, my major diameter is going to be 19.5 inches, and my height is going to be 24 inches, and let's see what that gets us here. So 
so my flat flat pattern width and length so I've, I'm a little high on length here because I only have about 42 sorry I only got 42 inches to work with so I need to make some changes um, in order to make that work alright so the dimensions I really want are 19.5 by 24 Think maybe by 27. The height really doesn't matter too much. And so that gives me a gross width, which is not the actual width, but it helps me determine how much material I need. Gross width of 31.3 and a gross length of 55.8. I think I'm going to spread that across two pieces. Um, I'm already going to have one seam in there. I might as well make two. So right now all that matters to me is my inside and outside radius. Inside radius is 12.619, my outside radius is 40.45. I'm going to lay those out on my sheet of plastic, um, both my sheets of plastic, and then I'll go, go from there. Alright, so I made this makeshift compass out of a piece of scrap hardboard. I'm going to try to I'm going to start my pattern in this corner. Actually, that's where the center of my radius is going to go. I'm just going to use a nail. And then i got a hole for my marker. So that's that. Now I need to make another um, pattern for the outside diameter, which is going to be 40 something inches, and this is too short for that. Alright, same story, different compass. I might actually be able to get this out of one sheet. I need a straight edge. Alright. <clears throat> I'm going to just try some regular sheet metal snips. <clears throat> See if I can cut this material. Looks pretty good. I'm actually going to I'm going to cut this with about an inch over um, on the inside and the outside because I want to roll a flange on either end to so make it connecting to other parts of the dust collector system a little bit easier. Alright, no sense in watch you guys watching me struggle with this. I'm going to finish cutting this out and get back on. I always uh, forget that I have this.
much easier. Here's a cool, cool little uh, result of using that jigsaw. Made a slinky out of the plastic. <clears throat> All right, so here is the rough cut pattern. Using the tin snips was a little rough. I could have gotten through it all the way with the tin snips, but I remembered I had the jigsaw and it made it a lot easier. So, so what my cyclone is going to look like, it's going to need a little persuasion to get into the shape, but looks like I only need this one piece, so that's nice. Then I don't have to, you know, bind two pieces together or anything like that. I have a little bit of an overhang. Um, on each one of, you know, on each of the perimeter, on all sides of the perimeter. So the overhang for the top and the bottom will be for flanges for attaching it to my dust collector system. And then the overhang on the uh, straight edges here will be so I can actually attach them, you know, make a cone out of this. Uh, I'm going to take a few minutes and try to figure out what my next step's going to be, and then I'll get back to you guys. I'm just double <clears throat> checking some measurements here. The critical measurement is going to be my gross length, and that is from um, the corner to corner on the large diameter. So I just hook in there, and it needs to be 55.8, so I'm going to mark it. And then I'm going to grab my straight edge and strike a reasonably parallel line. From that, I'd say that's about it there. Okay, so from here, from this line to the end of the uh, plastic on that side is the actual diameter of the cone. All of this is overhang, um, which I can cut some of it off, but I want some of it so I can make the seam that goes down the length of the cone. Well, it's the middle of the winter here, so it's pretty cold and making this plastic really stiff. So I'm going to try to warm it up a little bit. My goal is to not melt it yet. I just need to make it soft, or at least uh, bendable. Yeah, zooming out here so you guys can watch me struggle with this in all its glory. All right, so this is kind of the shape I'm shooting for here. I think I might get that blowtorch out, or you know, fire the blowtorch, 
blowtorch up again and just start warming it up in this direction and I want to try to give this thing some memory so it's going to be a little bit easier to work with when I start um, riveting the seam together. I plan on using some aluminum rivets and I'm going to insert them this way from the inside out so the heads of the rivets are on the inside and give us the lowest profile possible. I'm going to also seam the seal, seal the seam with silicone um, to make it airtight. So it's pretty cool. Um, I've never really worked with this material before, but I could see as I was warming it up, you know, I'd hit a flat spot on the cone and then it would just relax and kind of bow out and take its shape. So I've got a pretty good roundness on the top and the bottom. It's really warm right now, so I'm going to um, I'm going to let it cool off and then take the clamps off and see how much of this shape it retains after being warmed up. All right, I let it cool off for about a half hour. It's nice and cool to the touch. Let's see if it did anything. That's pretty good. I could probably get it better if I wanted to spend more time on it, but I think uh, this is gonna be enough get me in the area. So this combined with the clamps, I'll be able to uh, clamp this up and get assembly. Alright, I just <clears throat> I just went to the store and bought my rivets. I got some backing washers too, so the rivets, the rivets don't end up pulling out through the plastic. What I got to do now is I'm going to take apart this. I just got two clamps on it holding it together. And I'm going to sand down some of the surfaces to prep them. I want to try to seal this with silicone as I'm riveting it together. Um, because, for obvious reasons, right? I, I want to make sure the air doesn't escape out through the seam. So I'm going to probably put a rivet in about every half inch. I bought 50 rivets. And this thing's a about 27 inches tall so you know almost a rivet every half inch and um, that combined with the silicone ought to make it nice and airtight See if we can focus there. You, so you can see, I, I put some deep scratches in it, just in the spot that's going to overlap, and give that silicone a little bit of something to dig into. I think I want to pre-drill some holes, just so I have something ready to rivet as soon as I get that silicone down on, on the seam. So I'm going to put it back together with the clamps and drill out some holes. And I think that's going to be the best course of action. Okay, I'm going to try to work this just a little bit at a time and work my way down the seam. 
leaving the clamps in place. Um, I don't need a whole lot of silicone to make the seal. The, the uh, rivets are going to do the majority of the work. I got all 50 holes marked out, ready to be drilled out. didn't turn out very good. I'm going to try a couple more and see if I can improve the situation. If not, we'll have to figure out a different way to do this. Here's the issue I'm currently having. It appears to be a riveter issue. I put my riveter on here and I pull it just doesn't have enough stroke to actually break the rivet off. I'm not sure. It may be slipping. I don't know. So what I've been... It, I can feel it start to slip, so what I do then is I take off this nozzle and when I take that off it gives me plenty of clearance Oops. It gives me plenty of clearance to pop the rivet But it leaves a, I don't know, it leaves kind of a mess here with the rivet head, so I'm going to see um, what else I can do here. It's just a cheap arrow riveter. I wish I had a pneumatic one. I used to have one for a job that I used to have, and it, they were great, but but the rivets are doing a good job. I mean, they're, they're sucking this joint right up really tight, so... It will work as long as I can figure out the logistics of everything. Okay, so what I did was I took the little nipple and it looks like this and I put it on the grinder and I flattened it down to, the, to that. Hopefully that'll give me the clearance I need to pop these rivets now. It just seems like a really unfortunate design flaw in this particular riveter. Okay, here goes nothing. Nope, it's still slipping. I don't know what it is about these that just don't work right. At least on plastic they don't. Maybe they work better on metal. Alright guys, I think we're going to have a change of plan here. 
Um, I only got, what is that, five in there, and then the rivets started pulling through the holes, and, and I may or may not have ruined my riveter here, since it doesn't have the, uh, doesn't have the little nipple on the end, so now I got a rivet jammed in there. Anyway, it's turned out to be a lot more hassle than it's worth, so. So anyway, um, I went to the hardware store and I bought just some regular fasteners, some machine screws, and I got some nuts. I already have the washers. I'm just gonna do a bunch of through holes and put machine screws in there, and hopefully that'll fix the problem. Okay guys, just want to update you where I'm at right now. So what I ended up doing was I was uh, kind of evenly spacing them down the side of the seam and then and then I would split the difference and now I'm doing that again and that just helped me kind of stitch it all together. The hardest part was getting the two ends just so this thing would make a cone and it's not uh, perfectly round yet so I'm gonna have to hit it with some heat after I get all this put together but it's got a bead of silicone underneath it and then I'm going to put a bead on the outside and on the inside and um, hopefully that'll be good enough let me uh, zoom you guys in and you can watch me put one of these in I'm only putting the washer on the inside. Whoops. Okay, get started. Pop the screwdriver on the inside, nut driver on the outside, and just tighten her down so she's tight. And there we go. We're gonna do the rest of these, and I'll get back to you. Well, what do you think? It may not be the most elegant solution, but I believe it'll hold. It's the next best thing to plastic welding. Here it is on the inside. I'm not sure how much these uh, screw heads are going to interfere with airflow. Hopefully not too much. I think I'm going to wrap it up here, um, just for this part. It's getting late in the day. And I want to relax since it's New Year's Day. Next time what I'm going to do is I am going to roll some flanges off of the bottom and the top here. And I still haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do that. But it will include fire. So um, thanks for watching everybody. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.